Welcome to the first turn. I'm your host, Hyena, and today, Lama and I talk about the Cities of Sigmar model release that came alongside Book 3 of the Dawnbringers Crusade campaign for AOS. We talk about the wrap-up of our local GT this past weekend, Midmo, and talk about different aspects of tabletop games, how they appeal to different people, and what we think might be our favorite, and more. If you like what you hear, give us a like, thumbs up, follow, or subscribe, or leave us a comment if there's something you would like to hear us talk about. All right, let's get to it. You have so many of those guys who know each other, who are, a lot of them are very good players. But yeah, Moose lost that first one by four points, and then and then he smoked out mm-hmm. a lot of the rest. And well, what's interesting about that is... In fact, he, he had like second highest battle points. You kind of like, you lose the first round, and then you go into loser's bracket. Mm-hmm. And so... Like, maybe your matchups are a little easier, but, like, only after round two, or only before round two, I guess, exactly round two, does it really yeah. matter for that loser's bracket? Because then, like, if you do well, you know, round three, you're you're facing all off against the one ones, yeah. right? The one ones are the other people who are in the winner's bracket who lost. Yeah. You know, so then it's not a big deal. Yeah, and, um, and there can only be two unbeatens. I mean, there was a draw on day one that they thought could mess it up because mm-hmm. it was an unbeaten draw, but then that guy lost. Um, but it was like, the the meta was so few Eldar. There were like three. Mm-hmm. Uh, but one of them was Harlequins, and it, and it didn't do well because the Harlequin list doesn't go into the Dreadnought list well. Mm-hmm. And the Dreadnoughts were very popular. The And it's the, the Ballastar, whatever that Dreadnought is. The shooty one? It's that one. Really? And it's... It's two Redemptors, two... Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, it's, I know the list. They're all in the Redemptor yeah, chassis. Yeah. So, Moose's was unique because he ran three Redemptors, right? Yep. Two uh, Brutalis. And, and, or, two, that's it, Brutalis. Okay, yeah, yeah. And, Brutalis is nice. And, and two Invictors, which nobody was on. Yeah, and then he was doing one Ballastaris, which is the shooty one, yeah. which was the missile launcher last cannon. A lot of people yeah. were on the double Gladiator Lancer. Yeah. Um, I'm not a huge fan of it. It's fine. So... One thing Moose and I sat there thinking about that a lot of people didn't was for its points, its output is actually greater than the Fire Prism, sure. even when you run three of them. Yeah. And so, but people were griping about the Fire Prism and not this thing. Mm-hmm. Now, this tank was mostly, I think, for the mirror match mm-hmm. to crack other Dreadnoughts. Um, or if they were running into Tyranids, running Monster Mash. Mm-hmm. The, the Gladiator didn't seem to be as important as I thought. Uh, and Moose's list actually does better against it because it puts it on minus one in a bunch of categories right and so he kind of hoped to run into that he didn't though um he still did great like i said he was like second highest battle points uh finished sixth overall in the event that's um, pretty good for a, for a round one loss yeah because he, <laughs> he not only won out i mean he it, it was like for any college football fans out there it's like when that team like in alabama loses an early game of the season but then wins out and mm-hmm. you can tell by the time they hit the playoffs they're gonna win <laughs> like they're it, you know it was just sort of like an early oops and again he lost to a great player who almost himself won out only losing to kyle playing astro militarum a player who by itc rankings is in the top like five percent of astro militarum players in the country mm-hmm. and is representing the u.s team in some event coming up so and then Kyle only lost one by one point. To another very good player. To another very good player who went 5-0 with, <laughs> yeah. with his uh, Marine list. Um, the two 5 O's were a Marine, and the other one was a Tyranid list. And the Tyranid list was very unique um, because it was not quite running the things we've seen. Almost every Tyranid list has been Neuro Tyrant, all of the Lictor variants, and then Gargoyles for, mm-hmm. for the screening. Uh, and then you run some version of Monsters in between. His did not opt for that. Instead, he did three Broodlords with three units of Gene Stealers. Huh. And still two units of Gargoyles. No Norn Emissaries. No, okay. um, and so the unique the unique thing about his list was what people have been using the Gargoyles for is they're dirt cheap, they're ultra fast, they get to do a move, shoot, move. Mm-hmm. And so what you actually do is what Tau did at the very start of their ninth head release. You move them out early and you pin the opponent in the corner. Nobody's playing anything that flies, and so they just get stuck there having to kill gargoyles before they can move. The Tyranids then run out behind them and score. They get up by big points, and even when their stuff starts dying, now the other person's playing catch up. The Gene Stealer list goes even farther because the Gene Stealers get a scout move. They get to move eight, 
advance automatically full with one with one of their stratagems and then still charge. Mm -hmm. Do they infiltrate as well? They can they infiltrate, scout, run, and still charge. I don't think they infiltrate as well. Okay. Okay. But in the Vanguard detachment, <laughs> they get to do the advance and charge. Sure. And they so they have a huge threat range. They run these three units at ten, and if they're going second, they either just pack them all behind buildings and then do it the following turn, or if they're going first, they spread out in like a 50-some inch line and kind of mm -hmm. quarter you off. And the difference between them and the Gargoyles is Tyranids really lack punch against armor. So the Dreadnought and Tank Heavy armor list, or the Astromil Terum list, or like the even some of the Suit Heavy Tau list, the Sisters list that are all in tanks, Tyranids have trouble punching that stuff. Gene Stealers don't, because they get a huge pile of attacks, hitting on twos with re-rolls, and when they've got the Broodlord attached, they're devastating wounds on all of them. And so... Moose didn't understand where it was good, and then I started explaining. Because mm -hmm. I was going around just talking to everybody who was winning and, like, what was happening, with what choices they were making. And they were all happy to divulge information. Too much to go into here because we got other stuff to talk about. <laughs> but but it was like, on math, the Gene Steelers were doing 10 to 12 unsavable damage before you even had to make saves. Right. And so that was just punch Tyranids don't have elsewhere. But most tiered players are completely overlooking because they looked at Gene Stealers, saw Strength 4, and just kind of wrote them off. Um, well, plus, there's also I mean, just the fact that... And Broodlord's a little pricey. That they're one, they're one damage, right? Mm -hmm. But they hit so reliably. They're one damage, which which a lot of the like the nasty things like those Redemptors are, are minus one damage, which aren't affected by this. Right. It's like it's like we were saying with the, the Dev Wounds change, where it's not Mortal Wounds anymore. So look for damage one weapons that are Dev Wounds because they... They aren't affected by right. any of the no damage reduction, uh, of, no nothing. You know, of the the nerfs to, right. to these rules. Like, you don't get damage reduction against it. You don't get. You still don't get your saves against it. You don't care about spell because they're yeah. one wound each. You know, kind of thing. Yeah, and so That's they're yeah, and so they're getting like their re re roll ones to hit and like twin linked or so. So they're just like getting so much through, mm -hmm. um, and they're pinning you back, and and they still have gargoyles if they want to to do more of it, so to more pinning. And so you're stuck there, and you actually have to kill the Gene Steelers, which are now two wounds apiece, mm -hmm. five up in Vuln. And, and that, and one of the units gets stealth. Uh, so it just randomly ends up a little tougher. Um, I think it was a cool metagame call. The irony is, and he, so there would have been two Tyranid 5 O's, but they had to play each other round four. And it was a super close game. And the, the Gene Stealer guy won. Well, that's that's assuming. Assuming the other guy would have won his. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> and he was a and he was another phenomenal player. Jake something. He's a guy everybody knows. Um, he he ran the Nord Assimilator, the three hundred ten point one. He mm -hmm. did, he didn't like it. He was like, I would have gone down to the emissary because he only ever used it to do the fifteen OC thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just not killy enough. It doesn't actually kill the big stuff like you want it to. Um, so why not scale down to the shooty one that can still score? Uh, but the Gene Steelers were a great call. The irony being is, I figured this out, the counter to the Gene Steel list may actually be the Termagant Swarm list. Because they do their scout move and then move, you then with the Gaunts get to back up and then go twin link to mm -hmm. shit pile of shots, and then and then now you have to go through 120 bodies. Like, So that list might actually be the counter uh, to it in the mirror match. Uh, but yeah, really cool, really cool weekend, really cool event, well run. Um, you know, the, the venue is just a glorified gym, um, but plenty of space. I think the the guy who runs it, his wife, did the catering, so it was like food was cheap. It's in a nice, quiet town. Um, so, yeah, I think that's one that I'll make a stop to because the, the whole thing was just super cheap, too. Well, it was really funny because uh, we were talking about where it was. Mm -hmm. It's in Ashton. Ashland. Ashland, Missouri. <laughs> yep. That's right. So cause, South of Columbia. Because <clears throat> we, we didn't go, but we were, we were thinking, like, well, we got time. Saturday, maybe we'll just pop down there. And we, we were like mapping it out to see. It's like, oh, it's only two hours away from here? That's cool. But the problem was on the same road mm -hmm. leading to Ashland, Missouri is Ashton, Missouri. Yeah. Two hours away, Ashland is four. Yeah. So it's like we would have just like driven down and be like, oh, this, this is the wrong town. Like, <laughs> so I'm glad we, I'm kind of glad we did. waste of gas. Yeah. <laughs> Eight hours of driving in a day would have been too much. Four hours I could have stomached. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, was, that's good. That's good to hear, though. Um, yeah, and, it, and most of our guys had a rough start to day one. Yeah. In fact, I think all of them lost their first round, but then went on to like win. Yeah. A lot. It was a pretty good spread. Um, I think if you look at the records overall, it was net positive. 
Um, I think yeah. only one of our group that I mean I can think of went negative. Um, was like one three. Everyone else was. Well, there was a uh, one four. Josh number two mm-hmm. went one three one. Okay, he talked. That's right. Yeah, and then Kendall went two three. But the thing is, two of his three losses were airtight, like mm. decisions late that that could have turned it. Um, and even in Josh one who took a what he thought was a meme list. It was an orc list with a stompa in it. Mm-hmm. This, cause the, <laughs> like that stompa didn't work, huh? Well, the stompa is mm. is like 200 points too much. Mm-hmm. for. But he went 3-2, and his two losses were like six points and four points. Like really close. The stompa did so much work. There were just armies not equipped to do it that he had one where it did like 50 damage against a Dreadnought. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just... And then he punted two more the next turn. <laughs> like, just insane amounts of damage. Um, but he actually used it kind of in that Norn Emissary role. You you move it to a center objective and say, well, if you're going to come get it, you now have to deal with all this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so that went better than expected. And then we had a orc, another orc player, Rhino, who 3 2 And one of his two was really close. And everyone else... Larson, I think, technically lost his last one. Yeah, I think he went 3 2 but it was like a one point loss in his last round. Uh, otherwise, they all had a really good showing. Mm-hmm. Like, but then most of the competition was was good. You know, they were all pretty practiced. Uh, and then, like I said, I just was going around looking at matches. And then when they were done, I would ask people about their decision making and whatnot. Uh, overall, I don't know which factions had the worst showing. I think there was like a straight demons list that didn't do great. Uh, but it was just someone who wanted to take one of each of the big ones plus mm-hmm. Bellicor, I think. <laughs> so, so that's a meme list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and it did, it didn't have a great time. Uh, I mean, the, the player was still having fun, mm-hmm. but uh, don't remember his name. Um, player was having fun, but it just because there should have been unless someone dropped, there should have been two o fives. If there was two five o's, there should have been two o fives. Yeah, there was there was <laughs> there was a young lady playing a list um, who hadn't played a game of tenth at all and was playing not her army. Mm. And I think it was I think it was sisters or blood angels or it was a very red imperial army and I think she went 05. Um, but everybody knows her and she was still having fun. But uh, yeah, I think those were the two maybe. Cool. Other than that, what else is there? <laughs> concert was great, but um, yep. we get uh, we have preview event next week. Yep. Um, and I think what we're going to try to do is do our normal Thursday record and then. Maybe try to do something live Friday. Yeah, perhaps? we can do both. We can do okay. one. We can do yeah either. Uh, I kind of want to talk about uh, you know the, the the things before the things happen. Um, it makes it it's a weird timing though because mm-hmm. it's it's nine p.m. our time on Friday night. Yeah, so that makes it a little difficult. Super so rare. we'll have to try to finagle it to make it work. But I, I you know I do want and I think we're we might try to do a, a something live. Yep. Which I think would be fun. It'd be that'd our be first fun. time doing that. Haven't done that yet. Yep. Uh, but that, yeah, that'd be so. That would be like our regular one would air on Friday, but mm-hmm. then we do a live. Yeah. You know, people shortly after. Twice. That'd be cool. Can't get enough of us. Yeah. But uh, that that was cool. But you just came home with an armload of goodies. Good lord, it was so much. So because what dropped? So part week? of the issue was that it was a dry spell for me at least because mm-hmm. uh, there was nothing that was really coming out that I wanted uh, until Cities of Sigmar officially releases, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but in addition to that, the campaign book for Age of the Brute, whatever, uh, Volume 3, uh, Belth, or no, Belthanos, uh, I didn't pick up him, the Sylvaneth character. Yeah, yeah. I, I will eventually when he's on his own. I, I don't need I don't need the box uh, with him and his like regiment. Uh, but uh, Iona's Cryptborn with his little <laughs> dragon <laughs> retinue came out. Um, plus the Black Talons release. And so it was just like, well, here's basically an entire army. Yep. I just went and picked up an army. And you got uh, you got General Lady on Manticore. Yep. Yeah. Big, big, that's a big, beautiful centerpiece. Yeah. Um, it's actually kind of funny is before they actually come out um, proper, they already got a points change. I don't know if you noticed that. Oh. They did some, they did some erratas. Already. Already. Uh, one of them was a nerf to, a points increase to some of the units in Cities of Sigmar. Which is the fusiliers, the guys with the shields and cannons? Mm-hmm. They went up from one fifty to one seventy. Okay, it's a pretty big jump. Yeah, that's pretty big. Um, the uh, the lady who's being carried in the palanquin went up twenty points from I think one sixty to one eighty. I wonder. Well, she's got 
she's got board wide <laughs> buffs and debuffs. Oh. So like she's really, Might have just felt she's too good. really good. And then the um the Smith or the, the Smith slash wizard. Who oh, everybody's shit. been painting up online. I don't even think. No, I think the Palakman lady went from one fifty to one eighty. So I think she was a thirty point increase. And then the wizard, um the war smith, whatever, went up from ninety to one ten. But I mean that makes sense because his buff is is really, really good. It's just here's more AP. Yeah, but you know, it's like, weird. It's weird that with no data, they they did that. It's one thing yeah. when they did that for like uh, leagues of OTAN, where the whole world blew up just reading some of these rules, and mm. then they had to like emergency errata before it was legal. But this cities have been waiting for the book to be official for so long. I, well, maybe that does mean there was data, you know, because there were some people who had the book. And you just proxy the models and yeah. play with it, whatever. And then uh, I like that they changed the points before the models really truly go on sale. Mm-hmm. I mean, you had to pre-order if you wanted to. But sure. like, if you go into a shop to go and buy the models, the points change before you buy them. So you know it's like, well, maybe they're not good enough anymore. I don't want it. Right. As opposed to being like, ha, ah, you bought it. Points increase. Yeah. You know. I was getting them regardless because I think they're they're beautiful. So, yeah. whatever. I'm fine. I was trying to uh, uh, coax some of these guys because the Midmo is all a 40K event. And not many of them play Age of Sigmar. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was getting some people hot on the city stuff. Uh, just because, like we talked about last week, just the aesthetic as far as a medieval mm-hmm. human faction is just so good. And there were some people who were like, at least going to like, yeah, I'm going to get me some of them cavalry mm-hmm. models. Like, yeah. Uh, don't know if they'll play, though. We'll see if we can get some locals to... Uh, you know, a lot of people uh, locally, I think, are... I think that's a good thing about AOS. It's, 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 a, very, it's a very good game. It is. Uh, I mean, it's right up there with 40K. Mm-hmm. W- without being as, like, competition focused Let's put it that way yeah it's less it's less match play e yeah because uh, 40k i mean the design for this edition is is whole in on let's do a tournament game yep and that's the, what's what they're focusing on that's what their changes are relying on um the way the detachments work to keep them balanced you don't get that many options for stratagems you don't get that many options right. for uh special rules you don't get that yeah. many options. for the first time it feels like they tried to make rules tighter for right. that yeah um, it was a I mean, they still they still fall short with some of their wording. Yep. They still fall oh, yeah. short with um, some of their fluff based decisions, mm-hmm. uh, and they fall short with you know some the unit, the stats of some units just not breaking um, customs right tradition. Mm-hmm. Space Marines are fours across the board still always they yeah. always will be mm-hmm. like they can't help themselves fours isn't good enough. <laughs> Well, and, you know and, I mean? and not when they're accompanied by so many zeros and dashes right. also. Yeah. Uh, it, and the rest of the game around it mm-hmm. changes wildly. And then the Marines just always... Stay, <laughs> they yep. are they're forever fours. Yep. Uh, but but the nice thing about Sigmar is that it's a nice game to fall back on and, and like palate cleanse a little bit yep. when you're done with, with your choice of game for a little bit. And, you know... You know and I think they still do a very good job with the match play of AOS, as oh, yeah. the data shows. Yeah. Um, but but it's a less weighty, a less rulesy rules set, mm-hmm. <laughs> which which to some degree lends it to be cleaner. Um, and the games play so fast, you know, despite all that, despite all the fluffy elements, of it, the games play really fast. Uh, even though there's way less range in it than mm-hmm. there is in 40k, you're not killing everybody turn one. Yet the game plays. Well, because you're slapping slapping each other, both you know. Top and bottom of every turn, yeah. every turn, because it's all melee. Yep. Things die way faster. <laughs> yeah, once yeah, everyone wants to be in that center of the table. Yep. So once it starts, it's just dominoes. Yeah. Um. But uh, anyway. But there's but there's a lot of people who are who either done with. I mean, I, I've been talking to a lot of people, kind of hyping up AOS a little bit mm-hmm. as being like, oh, I still want to do stuff, but I don't know what I'm going to do now. And I'm like, well, there's this game, uh, because like people who play um play Magic. Get burnt out of magic yep. every once in a while. People go through cycles, you yep. know. Yep. No matter what game you're in, but magic folks uh, want a second game. They like they like a fantasy setting. Here's one. Mm-hmm. So I know some folks that are, are in magic and getting into that. Uh, there are some folks that are in um, like Star Wars Legion. Yep. Who have been going hard. Our buddy Kendar is uh, is trying to get that world's invite. Oh, he's got a, he's got a few more to go for the year before. Mm-hmm. And he says, well, as soon as I get it, he's got a, he's got a list locked. By the way, yep. Ooh, he's got a good list. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he four owed, six owed, whatever whatever yeah. the the number was. Um, the last event he went to, but because there weren't enough people participating, they couldn't give out two. They couldn't give yeah. out a second invite. Yeah. So he would have gotten his invite last time. Yeah. But. Um, Talk about bad luck. <laughs> yeah, I know. yeah, I know. Jeez. But with that same list, there's no changes coming 
right. to the game because uh, Star Wars Legion does those changes very slowly. Right. Uh, I, I've heard it's because they have a very rigorous approval process through like Disney to try oh, to get changes yeah, made yeah. and published. So that uh, the, different animal there, yeah, yeah. So the changes happen very, very slowly. It's technically then not all in house. You right. have to like go to the yeah higher up, higher up, higher up, and get it approved. Yeah. Even though the people that are approving it don't really have any knowledge or ideas. Of they don't care what the game. Yeah. But it has to be like it has to go through the steps, and then you yeah. know there, there's delays in every. I imagine that's every, issues every like Lorcana or anything Marvel or yeah. probably. Yeah, uh, it seems like MCP does not have to go through those same kinds of. Oh good. Um, some autonomy you know, there. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, but at least for the next few events for that game, Star Wars Legion, uh, there are no there are no changes to the meta. There are no changes to points or anything. Right. And so he's able to go with him with the same list locked and ready to go and, and know which missions are going to be played and, uh, you know, kind of go with the game plan, um, which is nice. And so he was, was talking about wanting to do some... Some Sigmar once he's done getting his world invite and switching to that for a little bit. Uh, I'm well, all about well, it. and you know, I think one thing that might have even there were two things, and we've talked about this that like have kept people from from taking that dive mm-hmm. into AOS. And it was like you had people who maybe tried it out before it was really a game and had some bad taste left in their mouth for some reason, and they just haven't gone back. They think it's still that game, or. Sometimes it was even the models. Mm-hmm. It was because you had this weird mix of 30-year-old models with contemporary models, and nobody wanted to buy an army like that. Now, while Skaven is still in that boat, mm-hmm. most... Might, might be... I mean, it's one of the last ones, though. It is. Most so. most of the other armies have seen a lot of stuff come in that's mm-hmm. very up-to-date, and, and the factions are becoming more defined uh, as they are. And so I think more people, especially when you saw something like Cities, for those who were waiting for the human... Fa- it's like... Yeah. Now they're looking okay. at it like, okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then just any of the models that have come out for these campaigns have been amazing. Yep. I mean, Lioness, the Belthanos, um, I think technically Pe- even need. People still band. talk about the Harbinger. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm tired of hearing, though, is when I go on Reddit, I don't even subscribe to the Salamander subreddit, but I get pop ups all the time that say, hey, is this dragon guy a good proxy for a Salamander's chaplain on, jet- on bike? And I'm like, no. No. He's not at all. What do you. What are you talking about? No. No. I, That's actually a really good price for that. He's riding a dragon. Yeah, it, it really was. Both boxes were actually really good. I mean, I know we're in an era where we laugh about X hundred dollars being a good price for stuff. But, yeah. But, yeah, now when it's like, oh, you get three huge models for that. 150 bucks. Uh, yeah. Well, and it's one you only ever have to buy once. Yeah. You know? And, and this, the Black Talent set, you only ever have to buy that set once. Yeah. And so I don't feel as bad about because these characters would have each been forty dollars separately, and, and instead it's like oh, seventy five bucks and you get all of them yeah. like whatever oh, five, yeah super cool. I've, Plus they look great. Uh, I went back and I uh, now that that'd be a golden demon entry as a unit. Oh god yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But I feel like you would be you wouldn't be alone in that. Someone else would submit it to. Oh, they have to. Yeah. It, in fact, there's some models that have come out in 2023 that mm-hmm. I just expect to see in droves in mm-hmm. March. Uh, one is that Harbinger for mm-hmm. Nurgle. Yeah. Everybody's painting that thing, and it looks great. Even even when I watched like Duncan do his tabletop plus version of it, it's like, ugh, that model's just so good looking. <laughs> you have one, right? I have one. Okay. It is assembled. Okay. That is it. There you go. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, yeah, I... Um... Rest of the box isn't assembled. That came in that right. battle force, right. or whatever. Right. You got enough of those yep. already done. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there was just so many models that, that came out that was just, were just great. I oh, just man. love the whole Cities of Sigmar aesthetic. Yeah. And I've never really enjoyed I mean, heck, too many even, factions. Even look at the Cavalier Marshal. Yeah. Spectacular. Like, he's got that very similar uh, pose to that Harbinger of Decay, but yeah. is, is not Nargle. You know, like that. The, the the two models look like they even like, like posed him facing this way instead. Like it's yeah. just the opposite, the mirror of him. But it's like I've never really been into their human factions, um, and and just this faction. Like, yeah, it's like, uh, and this Cavalier Marshal model is overshadowed because on its own, if this model would have just dropped with a campaign book, people would have been like, oh, that looks great. Or if it would have been an event exclusive, oh, that looks great. Mm-hmm. But because it came alongside. You know, Talia mm-hmm. and came alongside all the regiments and came alongside, released the same one as, uh, you know, Stormcasty guy. Yeah. Uh, he just gets, this this model is phenomenal, but gets overlooked. Yeah. 
So this that could be one that you could sneakily do for like a golden demon or whatever, I because agree. less people <laughs> will be on that guy. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it was a uh, it was a gigantic release though. Good lord. Um, but uh, like we said, Sigmar is getting. How many points do you think you expanded your army by? Um, I don't even want to think about that. <laughs> Because I know how much how much how much dollars I expanded my army by, and I don't want to. It's a few. <clears throat> All right, so I gotta do the math. I notice it's four hundred points. Two of the dragon riders are three hundred and forty. Well, that's for stormcast. Yeah. What about for cities? Well, I'm mad enough. Okay, so that's okay. three forty, and then Neve and her group are three hundred and forty. Yep. So that right there is like a thousand points of stormcast. I just added mm-hmm. two yeah. boxes. <laughs> thousand points. <laughs> like a thousand points. Uh, cities, I got. I, I mean, I'm. This is only the first pass. I've, only, I've gotcha. got one of, one of every box. And they only had so many in, right? Yeah. Because yeah. uh, it was allocated. Yeah. So we got, well, I got one of each box. Uh, Talia is not super cheap. I think she's like 300-ish. Um, the Marshall is only like 130, 140. Oh, I suppose they're all probably lower points. Yeah, they're, they're humans. Are. Yeah. Um, the Fusiliers are 170. The Command Corps, I think, were like 200 points. Did the cannon come out, too? Yep, cannons here. Mm. Uh, it's 130, 140, something like that. So I mean, it's, it's only like... I don't know, like a thousand points of cities. Okay, eleven hundred maybe. Yeah. Um, whereas, like, like I said, the, the Stormcast alone are chew up points per thousand right there. They chew up. So you you were saying us, uh, but Age of Sigmar. Mm-hmm. Before I interrupted you and asked how many points you've added. Oh boy, <laughs> uh, Age of Sigmar. It was like gaining traction. Yeah. Or, or... So it's it's kind of like that fallback game where it's like you get tired of whatever game you're in. And like uh, and what we were saying was, was Kendar was, was going to do in the same. So like in our local community, I mean, like probably like, I don't know, eight, 10 people are interested in playing it Good. now all of a sudden. Well, and you know, I think uh, as a fallback game, that's referring mostly to the people that are hardcore tournamenters yeah. because when they're playing hardcore tournament magic or Legion or uh, in this case, 40 K, um, the 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 prep playtesting and then the travel and the events themselves can burn you out and you sometimes need a a break and then you can do this and it's fun and fast still with and with arguably better looking models than any game um i i is it an argument cuz okay it might not so be. i'll put it this way cuz the models are better top tier yeah Just the models the models in AOS are better than 40k models yeah cuz like 40k models are boring no offense. A space marine can only be posed so many ways. Yep. He's still a space marine. He's still a terminator. He's still, you know, whatever. Yeah. I mean, besides, like, Tyranids, who they've come up with new large monsters for, it's not really been much new different things. It's how many... For kinds of, so established, how, how many, yeah. yeah. How many kind of tanks can we have that all basically right. have the same aesthetic? Yeah. You know? I, th- I think it's the attachment people place to 40k, probably. Sure. But, I mean, it's the lore, so, too. Yeah, I mean, the best-looking models... Uh, and and if the match play itch gets them, mm-hmm. there are still events they can play for this. Uh, they just always feel less um, stressful. Yeah, because because right. like the AOS event that takes place at Adepticon, for example, gets a huge turnout. I mean, it's almost the same size as the 40k. One. Yeah, it's like 200 whatever players, and yeah. then the team one was almost that many. Yeah, um, the rooms full, but but everyone's just a slight little bit more relaxed. Mm-hmm. None of the games are worried about going to time. Because, because like we've talked about, it goes so fast because all the actions in the in the, ha- in the middle of the house, and so this is a great one for those players to take a breath, and it's a great one for people who are diving into miniatures mm-hmm. for the first time. Absolutely, the um, the 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 detail on the models are so exaggerated that it's like really easy to start painting them. Yeah, they're almost they're they're all hero scaly right. kind of. They're they're a little larger, which I mean you can get so much detail into like busts and, and you know 40, sure. 40 mil scale models and stuff. Uh, they are a little higher scale. They are uh, like I said, there's lots of feathers, there's lots of um, fur, you know, that kind of stuff mm-hmm. that lends itself to to new painters painting it. You know, trying out get, a lot getting of into stuff, getting into or like it. even looking at that Frigo Marshall, yeah. he's got a wooden chest on. The back of the horse. Yeah. So now you have different textures you yeah. get to play with. But the but the detail in them is so exaggerated that it's not like, well, I have to freehand fur. It's like, no, these fur tufts are enormous. They're like <laughs> they're like claws and spikes. Like they're really easy to to know like where is the spot I need to highlight on this on this tuft? Oh, it's this ridge on the top that's yeah. it, gigantic. And it lends you know? itself to obviously GW's ideas for their their painting system right. with with all their technical products. Um, and, and I think there's an appeal to fantasy imagery, getting people into a game first. 
before sci-fi. Mm-hmm. Like sci-fi all branches off into so many niche things, whereas fantasy is sort of all-encompassing, and most people can so like it. I feel like there's a difference in in people who like Lord of the Rings, correct, compared to Star Trek. Yep. Right. Those are two different, very, two different, very different nerds. Yep. Right. Because <laughs> with, with like fantasy, it's like I like the. Uh, the romanticism of fantasy and like the, the ageless elves and you know right. and you know, stuff like that and dragons hoarding you know, whatever nature that looks untouched everywhere right and, yeah whereas like when you get into something like Star Trek you're like well how's the science work <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you know? right it's like, it's like a different kind of thing yeah um, I mean it's it, it's it's different sides to a coin right because I mean look at Star Wars Star Wars is is while it's a sci-fi story epic whatever it's um it's still very much a fantasy story it's magic in like space Dune. like a lot like Dune. yeah which, yeah which star wars draws a lot of its and so from. and so like it's it's <laughs> different people are drawn to different things mm-hmm. but i mean there's it, it's still it sides to a coin right yeah it's just i you i think you're right with with trying to paint you know models for the first time especially when it's not like a hardcore sci-fi yep. nerd uh, normal people getting into painting look for fantasy models. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like a lot of um, D and D players, especially. That, I mean, that's that's yeah. where I was going next. Is D and D is fantasy. I've seen you know, a like, number of people just in the store, yeah. uh, both pre and post rearrangement, mm-hmm. uh, who you can tell are just role players. Yep. They do their game nights with their friends, and they walk over to the D and D section. And the miniatures are okay for that. They're four bucks, you know, and they're they're fine. But then they'll like wander over and be like, "What's this?" and the price doesn't even bother them because they're like, "Well, I want that thing mm-hmm. to be our our manticore or our chimera or whatever we can, <laughs> and and I want that guy to be my wizard and I want that girl to be my mm-hmm. assassin." And, and so they see the stuff and it just looks so good. And I think you get a touch of a wider audience. Also, when you're a new painter, something like a space marine is often shown around online as like the baseline, but I think a space marine is actually harder to start with than than something fantasy. Because space marines have these big, smooth, rounded shapes right next to hard edges. And to make it visually interesting requires a lot more effort, especially on a big domed shoulder plate. Uh, and then to make a backpack interesting and not, you know, flat and wash. Fantasy, you get you get the space broken up. Fabric is tied with rope, which is overstrapped with leather, which is carrying a wooden thing. And then there's a... And so you have, like, these short spaces to work on different textures and those short spaces lend themselves to things like washes and cheating the highlights in a I short mean, yeah. space. Even if you would cover the whole thing with a base coat and then wash the whole thing, it would probably look a lot better than trying to do that. I mean, the, on a big marine, you get right. coffee stains, you get uneven settings. I mean, like, that's it's kind of discouraging for new painters when they yeah. try to start a space marine. They they do that. I'm going to base coat it. I'm going to wash it. Why does this look so bad? Yep. Like that's <laughs> yeah. that's why a are very watches? common why thing. Did it, why did it not? Yeah. cover that circumference nice and yeah. and then there's cylinders for the legs and they're also smooth and uh yeah i, I actually think a, a marine requires a step up mm-hmm. like that's when you're trying to push yourself you, you do that or if you already are a, an advanced level painter a palette cleanser you go to a space marine yeah and i i like i give out a lot of painting advice when yeah. people come in and i like i hate when they're like i'm trying to do marines i'm like okay mm-hmm. and i want it to be black yeah. or i want it to be white mm-hmm. i want it to be yellow I want it to be red. It's like there's so many colors where I'm like, ah, don't start with Space Marines then. You picked like, one that, are, that if you're new, that's going to be a pain. Right. And so, like, I give advice. I'm like, well, you need these seven colors. Mm-hmm. And they're like, why can't I just do it white? And I'm like, well, that's a complicated question. <laughs> How long do you have? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And so it, it's a lot of that where I'm like, well, you know, um, one guy came in and is like, I want to paint my Tyranids to look like Xenomorphs okay. from Alien. And yeah. I'm just like. <sighs> Black with. Translucent green. Oh, like, oh <laughs> yeah. man, buddy, that's gonna be difficult because yeah. trying to make black look interesting often involves you going other directions than black. Especially if you're new, you know. Yeah, and like, that's what it is. Yeah. It's like very little experience. And it's like so. He's like, so what? I just highlight it gray. And I'm like, no. <laughs> I mean, you could. You could. You could try. I it. mean, you could. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Here's what I would do. And it's just like whew, right over their head. Like yeah. they had no idea. How to like do the things I was saying, and I'm like, oh, yeah. Well, man, and then you almost have to just default rough. to like, well, okay. So for a first try at that, you, here's what slap chop is. Right. You almost have to teach yeah. them that. I mean, uh, dry brush. What's dry brushing? Oh man. Yeah. You're um, gonna zenithal into gray, and then yeah. do a green wash do, over do, it. To, yeah, exactly. That's pretty much. That's it. when basically what I told him was like, well, I mean, you want to do you want to do this grayscale. Start mm-hmm. with grayscale. Uh, get 
get the details to pop out with your lighter gray over your black, and then go with something like Black Templar. Mm-hmm. And, and like, blend it all with just a wash. Water down some Black Templar, because it's a little greenish. Yeah. Just you could sneak in, like, the Athonian can yeah. shit, or whatever that dark sure. green one is, yeah. to, to tint it. Yeah. Yeah. But, but whatever. It's like, just yeah. do one of these that, like, Kind of. and, and sometimes that's that's yeah. tough too that can be discouraging for new people in because they got an idea from a movie and they want to make mm-hmm. it look like that in their minis and it's like that act, as simple as that looks in the movies on a miniature that's going to be hard to, yeah. to to show but but I, but back to what we're saying I think entry game palette cleanser game fallback game Age of Sigmar just mm-hmm. it's like the best one it, it's a great premiere game on its own but it's even the best one of that anytime we've watched players just around us and so this may be anecdotal want their palate cleanser they'll jump into conquest or jump into mcp and all these games are fine but they they don't end up sticking with those there ends Mm -hmm. up a a big problem that they know is not going to get fixed for a long time and so they're like well now what and then we're like there's this one over here (laughs) nah i'll just wait for old world yeah (laughs) (laughs) i'm going to get that bretonian noble Okay. On, the, on the Pegasus. Mm-hmm. That model I is great. I those foot knights look spectacular. They also are yeah. great. I'll have to get those. I don't know if I'm actually going to play Old World ever. Well, I, I mean, I've got an army. No. I've got I've got my Tomb Kings. I've got a full Tomb Kings army. Still in rectangles. And you know they're going to get some new stuff. Right. And so it's like, I could. Yeah. But it'd be like begrudgingly playing the game out of like obligation to these old models. To give them some table time. Right. You know? Like, oh, it wasn't a waste uh, and, and, and well, and when they showed off some of the stuff with the how the units form up and everything, so I mean, I liked. So they, they, they've done a few articles now yep. telling me like here are some of the rules we're we're, we're working with. Um, I was like, all right, it's phase phase by phase, like we spells. like that. I was yep. like, okay, cool. They showed off something else, and it's like, okay, cool. And they're like, and here's how movement works. And they showed these diagrams of wheeling, and I'm like, oh. This is the worst. Which was already like one of the worst aspects yeah, absolutely. of the game. It, it is the worst aspect of that type of game. And it's, it's awful. I hate it. As we found literally 30 seconds into playing the first demos of Conquest before it was released. Yeah. Myself, Moose, Larson, we're all there at Adepticon. And it was the first movement phase. And we were like, so wait, so we can do this when wheeling? And then they were like, not in the spirit of the game, but yes. And it's like, oh, exploitable instantly. And it was like... <laughs> And now this is back in Old World. Yeah. Yay. Well, it's also, they, they showed off the fact that um, movement for charges is based on your your speed. Mm-hmm. And again, that's another thing where it's like, okay, so some units will never get to charge because yep. cavalry is faster. Therefore, don't even try to charge because you're never going to get in range. No. Ever. Yeah, dwarves, good like, luck. It's like most, most games have like some... Uh, you know, level playing field when it comes to certain mechanics, right? Like certain things, yes, you can move faster mm-hmm. when you move, but once you end up charging, you still only have a 2d6 to try to get there. Yeah. Right? So it's like, and, and then usually you get to move and then try your charge in, in most games. Right. This kind of game where it's either you give up your moving and attempt to charge, or you move and you do your wheeling and stuff. In a game like that, you are you have a very specific maximum range. I'm not going to move. My, my movement is four. I get that as part of, you know, my charge move. But then I roll 2d6 and take the best. They said that that was the that was the charge move. So it's like a unit that has movement six has a maximum range of twelve when they're charging. So your turn has to start with your opponent within twelve for it to be possible for you to make it. Because you have to declare the charge. Yeah. Like right up, like yeah. in that movement. Yeah. But a cavalry unit who might have like a movement of ten gets also to roll a d six and add it to their charge. So as long as they stay thirteen away from you on their movement, you never get to charge. You them. never get to charge them, but they <laughs> will get to charge you. <laughs> on yeah. average dice, they make it. Yeah. So it's that kind of thing where it's like, well, this is very, very exploitable. Yep. Without some kind of mechanic of like alternating activations or like randomized turns. Right. Something like that. You are just not going to ever be able to make the S- Side note, you know I mean? is is that that uh, randomized top of turn in mm-hmm. Age of Sigmar is one thing that makes it so charge blocks and, and other sorts of movement are not as predictable. Like you, right. you don't get to have that in your back pocket because the opponent could get to go or you. Yeah. Well, so, you can't math it out with geometry and be like, well, I'm, I just win. Right. You know, like there's, there's that you have to, you have to keep in mind that, well, you could get your opponent could, you know, two move in a row. Right. To counter your things. So you need to be planning for that. Mm-hmm. Right. Like that was one of the things that I had as, as like agreements with conquest and with, with fantasy. I'm like, well, I know exactly the range or in, um, uh, what else was it? War Machine was another mm-hmm. example. 
where it's like cavalry is just straight faster. As long as like you're, you know, if I move up and you shimmy back to stay out of the range, you can constantly stay out of my range until you're ready to attack me. You always me. get to decide, yeah. And it's like this feels really, really bad. Nope. Um, because that one was even worse because it was just double your movement. So like you, you just if you were a five inch move, you just went ten when you were charged. Yeah. It was something like that. It's oh, if you have a six inch, you always go twelve. So like my ten will never get in range of your twelve inch yep. charge. You're always going to get to attack me first. And even worse, they can like really they can like good. feed you garbage right. units in the way. Yeah. Um, and I and I don't know if we've seen that yet for old world, but there used to be a thing in fantasy that was that was basically march blocking or, mm-hmm. or charge blocking. I don't think we've seen that yet. Where you like just flew like a single eagle up there, and like now the enemy can't march the, cause, because the enemy is distracted. Because they see an eagle mm-hmm. nearby, they can't march in formation or, or do this kind of stuff or reform anymore. Like, yeah, and they couldn't get within so yeah. close of it, and so it was like yeah. you, you effectively blocked their movement with an eagle down the flank. Yeah, um, I don't, it didn't work forever, but there were a lot of additions where that was a thing. I feel like the the biggest problem with it was that it was in like it was next to you, so you could never do anything to it. Mm-hmm. If it were like this thing is in my way, literally in my path. Sure, you're march blocked. Yep. You, you either charge it and go kill it, or you try to like wheel around it to go around, right? But the fact that it was off to the side and it was just near you, yeah. it's like, why well, can't run straight because it's to my right? <laughs> what kind of nonsense is this? <laughs> you know? And like I said, it's 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 like the oh look, there's a squirrel. Like your your soldiers are distracted mm-hmm. by by an eagle being over here. I you I, know like, I think in their just, efforts to oh. try to give the old fantasy players, mm-hmm. as much of the game that they remember, mm-hmm. it's going to have all of the same problems that the game they remember had. Yep. Well, I mean, they showed, even with the formations, with marching formation and fighting formations being different, you have to re-rack up your models. Oh, my God. It means you can't have just, like, pre-done blocks. No. You actually have to have individual models now to re-change the width of your of your line. Right, because that. there was the march formation yep. and the... Uh, the fight formation, yep. effectively. I hate that. Uh, I hate the fact that some models or skirmishers are just loose formation. You're on rectangles and squares. Yep. But this unit, because it's a skirmish unit, does not have to obey any rules for a, a rank-and-file game. I could just be wherever I am within two inches of one another. It's like, okay. And that that was the thing. There were some uh, Skink, Ungor, and some other like units in the old game that were like that. And mm-hmm. it, just, it was so weird being on squares. Yep. Where they're loose. Um, I mean, there were some cavalry that were like that. High elf, um, what were they called? The bow and spear guys from high elves? The light cavalry? Uh, Remember those? But they were like that. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. The, 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 the low thorn cavalry? Whatever okay. they're called. I can't remember what they're called now. Yeah, they're but they were like that, where it's like, oh, well, I'm, a, I'm a cavalry unit that doesn't need to rank up. And hmm. I just, like, the simplest thing they could have done if they really wanted the rank up system was. They had the movement trays ish in War of the Ring, mm-hmm. which was a version of Middle Earth they did a long time ago, where the models themselves were on round bases that sat within platforms. Yeah, again, and, and, and Conquest does yeah. that. Uh, it, and it's like, first of all, models just universally look better on circular bases. They just do, they look more finished. Yeah. Uh, and by doing this, you put enough space between each model that you can actually make their poses a little more dynamic. Mm hmm. Uh, and it would have avoided this. Well, Conquest also does it in what are called stands. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So so your your little square that your guys all slot into might have four models on it. It might have two models on it. It might have one model on it. But it's still called a stand. Correct. And so, like, you when you'd rank up it, it was like, you don't actually start moving models until the entire stand's worth of stats dies. Yeah. You know, and so it was like, it was easier to you know, kind of... Move your models it's, around and do stuff with your models because you're not we're having to worry about like oh well how many skeletons died thirteen okay which yeah you start picking off individual you know thirteen individual skeletons that are just going to reanimate the next turn you just put them back it's right it's off you better put them in the right order they're not going to stand up because the yep. their spears or whatever and um that's and that's where you need to do that separate like the aesthetics and the mm-hmm. from from like the rules from like the fluff uh, to make something m- more practical. So otherwise, it's just all of those same things that were a headache about the game are still going to be a headache about the game. Yep. But nothing wrong with buying cool-looking models. I know. I'd and putting them on a round base. I like that. I will. You know what? Yep. I will. Yep. Because fuck them. Uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah. 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 I, I, anything that I've, I think I've switched over to round, I'm not definitely not going back to square. 
If I haven't switched it to, to round yet, it's still in squares. I'll keep it that way. But mm -hmm. I'm not redoing my models. No, sorry. I've got I've got white lions. I've got what are those the little skirmishy guys from High Elves called <laughs> the Swift Hawk ones. Right, you know those right. guys. Uh, Shadow warriors. I've got shadow warriors. I've got Elephantars, folks. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I've got all like lots of High Elf stuff. I've got the old Empire stuff that I was using as cities. Um, that I took off of squares and put on rounds. I'm not I'm doing that. Sorry. Not no. going to happen. Uh, any of my Skaven. No, nope. Skaven's for, for Spe AOS. Sorry. Speaking of switching from old to new. Mm -hmm. So as you've you've purchased a bunch of the new cities. Yep. Pass one. Are you eventually going to replace all your old Empire models with as much as you can? So I say that because I just picked up another uh -huh. box of Gene Stealers. Yep. Even though I have 64 old Gene Stealers, mm -hmm. I will end up replacing them all with the new ones because they just look so much better. <laughs> like I may. I mean, it's it's tough, right? Because if I get another uh, marshal on mm -hmm. foot with his with his entourage with his retinue, uh, I'll have two of him, and he'll look exactly the same. Unless you convert him a little I don't, bit, but it's, it's head, hard. It's hard to. Yeah. I, I think I would rather just use an old model that I've already got on a round base okay. that is the same size, same profile, convincingly the same kind of model for a character. I can see that, you know, but, but, that kind of thing. But for the rank and file, for the. <sighs> I, I can't do it for the soldiers. I think I, I don't think I could. Uh, I did do one thing with Seraphin when they got their their thing, their update. I pulled all the old Saurus warriors I had off of their large ovals. I'm gonna put them on small ovals and be the melee skinks. Mm, okay. Because they have those like chickens. Yep. <laughs> and they build two things. There's the range ones and there's the melee ones. Uh, but I think what I'm going to do is, is make it so that my old Saurus warriors are going to be the melee versions of them and then have the official model be the ranged version of them. To have like, to, to, to use old models and to show the difference between them so that they're obvious. The new skink cavalry that ride on them raptor things. Yeah. I saw, there was someone at Midmo who had, who had some marine unit of theirs on them. I don't know if it was supposed to. Probably outriders. It was like their outriders, yeah. yeah. Could be. And it, they, they were painted okay, but it was like. I thought those would be too small, yeah. and Marines are a little big on them, but it don't. It like kind of worked yeah. when I looked at it. Well, I mean, those those Agridons are, are kind of large. Yeah, they're they're like deceptively big. Uh, they are not a, a replacement for the old Saurus cavalry because they are just so much bigger. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, in spirit, they're a replacement, but you couldn't be like, I'm going to use my. Saurus cavalry as Agridons. It's like they're not big enough. Yeah. Like they're not they're not the, the old same cold scale. Ones, yeah. yeah, the old cold runs are, they're just not the right scale. Yeah. It wouldn't it just doesn't work. So that's the only thing I can use those old models for is like mm. this. Which yeah, whatever. It's fine. But uh with the cities, I mean I think I could rig it up so that it was a convincing proxy, mm. but it, it won't look right. If I put like a shield in front of my handgunners, it's not gonna be right. <laughs> that's not gonna look right. You know, or um, so you might, you might slowly replace yeah, them, like update them all. Yeah, or like the Freegal Guard are not heavily armored enough to be steel helms. Right, like it's just a completely different aesthetic. Yeah, it is. Uh, I might use like my great swords as Drukari or, or Druki, the Harganeth like, guys, the yeah. Harganeth executioners, something like that. I think that could be that would work. Um, I could use some of the elves, like the the more sneaky elves, as the huntsmen. We'd have to figure out some kind of like dogs to run with them. Yeah, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, that would work. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, there's there's some stuff I I definitely think I can use, um, but some of it is just gonna have to go the way of the dodo. Way of the dodo. Yeah, just have to go. Um, yeah, and I understand fiscally why people keep old models and, and still use them. I mean, especially when GW is allowing you to like, they haven't changed the size of some new ones so much. Right. Like the new gene stealers aren't larger than the old ones. They just the details finer. Right. Um. So they've got like thinner limbs, I mean, and they put them on a bigger base. Finally, yeah, that's good. They're on just they're on a twenty eight or thirty two. Twenty five was ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there are some examples of, of you not just like straight up not being able to use an old model mm -hmm. when a, yep. when a new yep. thing comes out, even if it's a replacement for it. Mm -hmm. um, one example of that I think is the new um, not Titanicus Titanicus. You know, like the 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 new epic that they're coming Nations out with. Imperialis, yeah, yeah, they were showing off just the scale comparison of new. Like Imperial Knights and new Titans, uh, Titans yeah. and stuff compared to the Epics old ones, and they are just, I think, intentionally significantly larger so that people can't use their old ones. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's that's a part of their decision making. Is it's not just like, well, it's easier for us to to make in this scale, which it is, uh, and put more detail into the model at this scale. 
it is. But it's also like we want you to buy new models, not just be able to use your old ones that are all, you know, 30% too small. Because they were showing off like the difference between yep. the, the old Predators and the new Predators. And it's like, yeah, this is this is like inexcusably small. Yeah. Like you couldn't get away with using and, this. And in, I like, know uh, the Titanicus Titans are supposed to be closer to correct scale compared to sure. the tanks and Marines than the old ones were. Because the old ones, they were far more limited in their production. But yeah, I agree. It's like they basically want this to be a, we're, you're going all new. Yeah. And that first box set uh, is probably a decent value uh, that's coming out to get into the game. It's quite a few models mm -hmm. in that first. And that's the other thing that's weird to me. Uh, the infantry in that, in that game are on, on circles. <laughs> They're on circles. <laughs> Because yep. I was looking at that, too, because it's like uh, in old Epic, you had ranks of like five wide yep. rectangular infantry and like three wide rectangular um, like predators and, and weapons and, teams, and, weapons and, teams yep. and stuff. And this one, you're they're they're like five bodies on a round base. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, man, they're just. <laughs> yeah. Swear, old is new and new is old. It's yep. funny. Looks better that way. Though. I know it does. Yeah. And then the rules are more about like the whole unit and not each individual yeah, yeah. Which, is, which is fine. I'm sure it's fine. Um, I mean, there's definitely no one in our local area that's interested in it. Uh, I know uh, we, we, we had uh, one guy talk about it because um, he thought it looked neat. I know there were delays for a number of unfortunate reasons where they literally had to, like, throw out all the books and start over. Mm. Uh, so there's been a delay in the release of it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I guess we'll get to talk about that. Although that one, that game, is not on the docket for next See, week's I preview. Didn't, I didn't look at the docket. What was the... It's what was the list of things being showed up? Every game except Blood Bowl and Titan and Legions Imperialis. I think. Okay. All right. So if we run it down, it's the three big ones. 40K, Age of Sigmar, Horse Heresy, The Old, Old World. World. Four. And then Kill Team, Underworlds, uh, No War Cry. Oh, No War Cry either. Yeah. What's the what's the Necromunda. Second? Necromunda. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Ah, no War Cry. No War Cry. Because that, that's usually, uh, they're not only great value sets, mm -hmm. but then they're models that we get to use in AOS. So okay. we're always a big fan of those. Because the Warcraft ones have always been surprising releases that we're like not expecting, but then it ends up great yeah. for an update to... There was a really interesting thing that happened. Because uh, they, they sneakily uh, brought out some rules and, and things without notifying anybody. Uh, the AOS app has, has a bunch of different things fed into it that they didn't talk about. Um, like the two... Underworld War Bands that just came out for... Um, the new season. The new season. are They have rules in there, but they didn't oh. tell anybody about it. It's funny. Because uh, <laughs> I was looking for the PDF, and I'm like, there's no PDF of this. And I looked in the app, and sure enough, they were there. And one of them is huh. an Ideneth. Yeah. Unit. And the other one is Slanesh. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a big, like, Slanesh-y... Like, they're all aquatic-themed Slanesh. They're yeah. all, like, they've got tentacles instead of legs. They're, they're almost like... Um... They're almost like the Nurgle guy with the tentacles and the, the trident. A little bit. Yeah. But what I think is interesting is, is, is like it might be like the evolution of the Chaos Gods a little bit. Right? Because Eidnets are aquatic elves. Mm -hmm. That's where they that's where they live. They 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 you know ally with aquatic creatures. They they you know they ride the ether sea. Mm -hmm. Uh why wouldn't it be that the demons, the demonettes and the you know, whatever is the heralds that that haunt them? Yes, because they they are still prideful. They are yep. still they're still elves. So why wouldn't it be that the the Slaneshi demons that are you know chasing them and trying to get their souls wouldn't be like aquatic and, aquatic and into, yep. yeah? Why why would they just be like you know normal demonettes with bird legs and right. stuff like why why not have tentacle legs yep. like octopus legs like? And they did it in a yeah. way that made them look distinctly different from the Nurgle Big aquatic time. stuff. Yeah. Uh, so. That, that was really neat to see. Yeah, yeah. super cool. Uh, but they also uh, int uh, gave out a PDF for for Warcry if you wanted to bring in this new AOS stuff, mm. the new cities stuff in, in Warcry, which is interesting to me because they came out with a cities warband recently, which was the Hunters, mm -hmm. the, uh, Wal the, Wal the Wilder yeah. Corps, um, you, know, you know, those guys. They were a proper warband for Warcry, right? Yep. So it's weird to me that they're like, oh, here's a PDF of... Also, also, all the other cities of Sigmar stuff to play. It's like, huh? Okay. Yep. Just interesting. Uh, so that, but like, there, that kind of stuff is kind of popped out. Uh, they had a couple of FAQs recently and erratas for some of the armies. Uh, we were talking about uh, the dreadnoughts being so heavy of a of a influencer for the the meta. One of the things was a stratagem that gave a, a dreadnought I don't know, character stats. I want to call it basically for a right. turn. The stratagem was like a command phase thing. You would give them plus one move, plus one bravery, plus one 
all kinds of different stats. Mm-hmm. But one of the stats that it used to give them is plus one of their saves as well. Yep. Uh, that's gone. So one of the Arada's four Space Marines was specifically, this stratagem no longer a- uh, affects the saves of the Dreadnought that it affects. Yeah, it was, which it was is in, good. The, in the Iron Storm Spearhead yep. uh, detachment, which, is, which the is the Iron Hands, Iron Hands one. Yeah. that a lot of people are playing. The Ancient Fury stratagem changed to read, until the start of your next command phase, improve your model's move, toughness, leadership, and objective control characteristic by one, and each time your model makes an attack, add one to the hit roll. So they removed the... Plus one to save. It was either plus one to saves or or minus one to the AP of the weapons that attacks. That might have been. It, it's, it's effectively the same thing. Yeah. Because they're already, most Dreadnoughts are on a two-up save anyway. Yes. So a plus one or a minus one to AP is exactly the same. It doesn't, yeah, it, it's no it, difference. It basically, since you can't go more than plus one or minus one, it basically just eliminated yeah. op- opposing stacks or whatever. Basically. It made it so AP on the opponent's weapon would need more to get it off that two, right. uh, which was relevant. I mean... Because there was, like, three things you could stack between yeah. stealth and cover and, like, that, and there was another thing you could do. You could you have, like, plus three or plus four. Uh, um, Armor of Contempt, yeah. that, cover, you were you were a two-up save with it with ignoring three points of AP. Yeah, which is insane. That's insane. And that's why, that's part of why, the Dreadnought, you know, Redemptor package we were talking about was so ridiculously good. Yep. It's minus one damage, so two damage weapons get reduced to one. Yep. It was oh, against a melta gun. You have a three up save. Yep. And you have stealth, so you're always minus one to be shot. Well, it was like it was like well, at least with the pet list we were we were talking shroud. about the dark shroud gives them stealth, which, which was which was what nobody was on. Right. Uh, the dark shroud made such a huge difference when he got in other marine matchups. It was like yep. his dreadnoughts just won every trade, um, and he could hide it. That dark shroud could just tuck in mm-hmm. a building, and uh, and then he'd sort of castle. Uh, the other changes to the Marines were pretty small. They let Kasaro Khan join the Company Heroes Which is unit, fine. He should have had that anyway. Yep. And then uh, for the Chapter Command, which was a Crusade rule, Yeah. it, it just gave a plus one of toughness to the mob on the unit Whatever. for the Arden Protectors uh, battle on Eh. Small changes. Yeah. That one, but that one is basically ignorable because it didn't matter. And but the other two were like, one was relevant, one was not really. Yeah. And, and we won't see much until, I'm assuming, the World Championships, which are next weekend. Hopefully after World Champs. Yeah. Um, there will be a chapter approved shortly after to address some stuff. Seems after, to be how they do it. You yeah. get a big event, and then they're like, "What do we need to check?" Done. Um, yeah. Yep. And it's almost predictable now. It's like when GW had previews, when GW had rules changes, it was always like they kept it secret mm-hmm. until they dropped it. I, that's a weird business model. Now they do the opposite. Now it's like, well, you know, this these certain times of year, we're always doing our mm-hmm. general's handbook, our battle scroll, or our chapter approved data slate, respectively. And then after major tournaments, look out for yep. updates. Um, and, and and they tell us when the preview events are coming. So I think that's a lot better. It really is. They can keep some of it secret to surprise us, but tell us the when. The contents of the previews, sure, keep that a secret. Yep. I love that. Yep. But, like, don't keep changes that, it's you know. It's a rule secret. Yeah, right? Like, don't, don't surprise us when it's going to drop, because if you drop it randomly sometime, I mean, part of when they were out of touch with the community... Yep, was, they were. Yep. Commu- you know, community, communities ran all the tournaments. Yep. And so they didn't even consider dropping a, a, a change to the rules or points or whatever and how that would affect, you know, um, any kind of tournament circuits. Yep. And so it was just like they would just randomly drop them when they needed to be updated and it was it would affect some upcoming tournaments and they had to scramble to figure out if they were within the cutoff time and right. people need to change their lists and change their play styles because things, you know, like, it's not great for the community. Well, and I, I love that they're advertising. Here's we're doing it in December, and it helps you know? people manage expectations. You can yeah. be like, you can have something that you know that the community knows at large. It's like, whoa, this is way too good, or oh, this mm-hmm. is bad, or this doesn't work right. Okay, well, they've told us and instead of falling into despair, yeah. you'd be like, well, we know it's going to change. We know this many times a year they do the thing, yeah. and then a tournament's coming up. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, the, and side note, this is a smaller thing. Points, it's the same way. Like there are some people who think that. Because tenth edition eliminated like individual war gear costs that it somehow lays your points writing. But I still remember edition after edition where things like a movement speed or the toughness of e- that stuff wasn't factored into the points. It almost mm-hmm. seemed like they just arbitrarily came up with a number, and then you went the whole edition without them ever changing it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and now it's so much more granular. Uh, that sort of stuff they try anyway to factor in. Um, so they're trying to hit it more. Yeah. But but uh, uh, I like to factor in all sorts of granular things ahead of time mm-hmm. you know w- whether i'm thinking 
what's big on the plate or mm-hmm. what's small. What's your main course? What goes on the side? Yeah, I like what makes for the finest, like tasty morsel. Yep, you know, and, and it's eat, the perfect bite. Finishing salt at the end, sure, to give it to give it that little extra. Yeah, makes me think we should uh, probably go eat. We should eat. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed. Check out our new episodes every Friday on Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Audible, or on Podbean. You can also follow myself and Lama on Instagram for more. We are at Hyena Paints Minis and at Llama Paints Minis. Music provided by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. And as always, we will catch you next time.